Hello dear friends, I am Durka Berry, Assistant Professor in Biochemistry. We will discuss today about the activation of pepsinogen. And as you know that pepsin is a very important uh, gastric juice. Before we go in detail, we have to learn about these terms, mucin, G cells, auxintic cells, peptic cells, as well as this pepsin. These are the regions in the stomach, which we will see later. Let's move on. Pepsinogen is the inactive form of the pepsin. Pepsin is the active part. And the gastric mucosa has different cell types like mucus secreting surface epithelial cells, G cells, parietal or auxintic cells which secrete HCL and chief cells or peptic cells which secrete actual digestive enzymes. With this introduction, let's move on to the mucin it is secreted by the mucus cells they are located throughout the stomach lining and the function is it forms the protective layer on gastric epithelium there are epithelial cells which are present which are lining the stomach on the epithelial cells they form a protective lining this is the mucin and they retain the bicarbonate that is why they have alkaline pH. Because of that, they protect the stomach from the acid peptic digestion because it buffers with the HCL. And mucus secretion is stimulated by the increased blood flow. If there is increased blood flow, it automatically synthesizes mucus in the stomach. Let's see gastrin or G cells. Gastrin is a peptide hormone very important peptide hormone which is secreted by the neuroendocrine g cells and it is secreted in response to a variety of physical as well as neurohumoral stimuli such as gastric distension that means when we eat the stomach expands that is gastric distension and also the presence of amino acids in the stomach because when we eat the proteins in the stomach they stimulate the secretion of the gastrin also the vagal stimulation and the histamine so these are the stimuli neurohumoral stimuli that means when we see the food it is the neurohumoral stimuli and the gastric distension presence of amino acids in the stomach and vagal stimulation histamine all these are responsible for the synthesis of this hormone namely the gastrin which is a peptide hormone and this gastrointestinal peptide hormone is synthesized by the g cells where are these g cells are present these g cells are mainly located in the pyloric antral region see in this region they are located and duodenum as well as in the pancreas these gastrin producing g cells are also present in the hypothalamus remember and also anterior pituitary as well as in the medulla that means whenever we see a food the gastrin or uh, it is produced even from the hypothalamus or anterior pituitary as well as in the medulla but in the stomach this gastrin is mainly secreted from the pyloric antral region this gastrin it stimulates the secretion of hcl this is the main function of the gastrin the secretion of the hcl and hcl is secreted from where it is synthesized from the parietal or auxintic cells gastrin also stimulates histamine release which in turn increases the secretion of the HCL. That means whatever it may be, whether it is a histamine or gastrin, it is leading to the synthesis of HCL from the parietal cells. Let's uh, see some of the important uh, points related to gastrin. This gastrin, it mainly exists in the three forms. One form is with the 34 amino acids. Remember, it is the peptide hormone and which is cleaved into a smaller little gastrin with 17 amino acids and the mini gastrin with the 14 amino acids. So, gastrin exists in three forms. First, it is synthesized in 34 amino acids. Among all these types, this little gastrin with 17 amino acids is the main hormone which has a half life of only 5 minutes. In that 5 minutes, it activates auxintic cells 
to secrete HCL. So let's move on to the parietal cells or auxentic cells. Parietal cells and auxentic cells, remember, they are meant for the secretion of HCL. HCL is secreted from the parietal cells or the auxentic cells. But the factors that increase HCL secretion, they act mainly locally by altering the concentration of these three hormones acetylcholine, gastrin, as well as histamine. There are specific receptors for these hormones on the parietal cells. And the hormones, they bind with the receptors and change the intracellular second messenger concentration. And finally, they stimulate HCL secretion. In this manner, the HCL is synthesized from the auxentic cells with the stimulation from acetylcholine or gastrin and histamine. And this HCL is secreted from the parietal cells, which are located in the mainly in the fundus region and in some books it is also said that it is the pyloric antral region and it is the energy requiring process what it needs is it it needs potassium activated atpas which is necessary for the production of hcl and remember h plus ions generated by the ionization of carbonic acid and this carbonic acid is from generated by carbonic anhydrase enzyme. The H plus ions are generated which are responsible for reducing the pH in the stomach. These parietal cells also transport H plus ions into the gastric lumen and they transport K plus ions outside the lumen. That means in exchange of K plus, the H plus ions are entering the lumen that is done by the parietal cells. Thereby the H plus ions due to the accumulation of H plus ions in the lumen, what happens? There is a decrease in the pH. That pH is responsible for the activation of pepsinogen. And let's see the chief cells as well as or peptic cells. The pepsinogen secretion is stimulated by gastrin and histamine. Peptic cells not only synthesize pepsinogen but also synthesize renin, gastric lipase, gelatinase and urease. Remember along with the pepsin all these other enzymes are synthesized from the peptic cells. Pepsinogen is the inactive protein with a molecular weight of 42.5 kilodaltons or 42,500 daltons. This inactive pepsinogen is converted into active pepsin whose molecular weight would be 35 kd and it happens so that by the removal of 44 amino acids from the N-terminal end which is done by the HCL that is the main function of HCL. HCL is synthesized by, by the auxentic cells and upon synthesis what happens HCL acts on pepsinogen and removes around this is the N terminal end and this is the C terminal end amino terminal and carboxy terminal and from the N terminal what it does is it removes around 44 amino acids from the N terminal end and now this becomes the active pepsin and this small amount this small initial amount of pepsin will lead to the activation of remaining pepsinogen to pepsin and this process is called as autocatalysis this pepsin again acts on other pepsinogen to convert that into pepsin that is what is happening here and this remember for to do this process the ph should be around 2 that means very very acidic pH is required. Coming to the functions of pepsin, it is an endopeptidase. Endopeptidase means for example if it is the protein and if pepsin is present in the vicinity, what happens? It is broken down into small fragments. It is N-terminal or C-terminal. Not from the ends but in the middle. That is why it is an endopeptidase. And it has a very strong proteolytic activity. It hydrolyzes the carboxyl side of methionine as well as the carboxyl side of phenylalanine, tryptophan and tyrosine. For example, if this is the polypeptide chain where methionine is present, if pepsin is added, it cleaves 
after methionine that is the meaning of carboxyl site of methionine or phenylalanine tryptophan and tyrosine it breaks the protein into proteoses and peptones see here these are nothing but proteoses and peptones the smaller parts of the digested parts of the protein are called proteoses and peptones that is about the function let's move on to the pathophysiology and it may lead to some conditions called gastritis and peptic ulcers this gastritis it is the abdominal discomfort upper abdominal discomfort which may be due to the indigestion and this frequent indigestions may also lead to peptic ulcer or gastric cancers peptic ulcer can also be called as gastric ulcer or duodenal ulcer the acid of the gastric juice or pepsin in the gastric secretion it damages the gastro duodenal mucosa it is the ulcers in the stomach or peptic ulcers are mainly due to the damage which occurred to the mucosal lining of the stomach leads to the peptic ulcers and these peptic ulcers are due to the diminished effectiveness of the mucosal barrier and also due to the hyper secretion of acid the hyper secretion of acid is due to the these three reasons we eat hurry and we eat with worry and we eat with more spicy they may lead to the hyper secretion of the acid which in turn lead to the peptic ulcers and helicobacter pylori infections also lead to the peptic ulcers by the way helicobacter pylori it is a gram negative bacillus which is leading to the peptic ulcers that's the pathophysiology and let's sum up once again in the activation of uh, this pepsinogen mucin it is nothing but uh, is secreted mu mucosal secretion which is uh, by the lining of the epithelial cells g cells which are responsible for the synthesis of gastrin and gastrin is of three types C g17 gastrin is active biologically active form and auxentic cells they secrete hcl peptic cells secrete pepsinogen and other digestive enzymes that's all about the activation of pepsin and before you leave do write your answers for these following questions in the comment box stay on this slide for a moment answer all the questions in the comment box don't forget that and also don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you